Welcome to lesson number five. Today we're going to be looking at uh, some applications involving the sine law and the cosine law. Just a reminder, when we are using right triangles, we can just use our primary trig ratios, so Katoa. However, this does not apply when we're using non-right triangles. So any triangle that uh, does not contain a 90 degree angle, you need to use either the cosine law, with which you use your triangle codes side, 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 where you're given all three sides, or um, the cosine law with side angle side, where you have two sides and a contained angle. And then anything else, you're going to be using your sine law. Now let's take a look at uh, some general rules that we're going to need to use in this lesson. So first of all, trigonometry and circles. Now, if I look at this line from C to A, this is going to be my center of my circle. And the center of the circle is going to form a chord that bisects another chord. So we have this is a chord to a chord that bisects this or goes uh, directly through it at a 90 degree angle. Now, if this is going through at a 90 degree angle, we would say that this is perpendicular. So this line is perpendicular to this line. If this is the case, then I would have this value BA, which is equal to the value AD. This will come in handy in some cases. In figure two, we have, um, we have three triangles that are given. We're just going to look at these two triangles that are extending to the outside of our circle. Now, we would say that these are subtending the same arc. So if I have an arc, an arc would be, we would have arc AC. That would be my arc. And where they are being subtended is right here because I have my triangle in green here, my triangle green, which is tending to that arc AC, but I also have my triangle in purple, which is tending to that same arc AC. We would say that those have the same angles. Y, angle Y, and angle Z are equal. Now, I have this third triangle in the middle, triangle ACO or OCA, um, this angle X is going to be double that of Y and Z. So if they have, uh, if you have a central angle, it's going to be equal to twice the measure of the inscribed angles of the subtended arcs. So Y and Z are my inscribed angles. Angle X is going to be double that. So angle X is two times Y and angle X is also two times Z. Now our, we have uh, some other rules. So in figure three, if I have a line that extends outside of my circle, we would say that this is a tangent line. So a line A to C is tangent or perpendicular to OB. We could say a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So this is the point of tangency right here at B. And lastly, we have an angle, and a semicircle is a right angle. So if I make this a semicircle by cutting it in half from P to R using the radius or the diameter of my circle, then if I were to form a triangle with my, um, with my semicircle, then we would form a right angle triangle. And with that, let's take a look at some of these examples. Now in this diagram, Diag uh, in this diagram, uh, O is the center of a circle, so O is my center, and it has a radius of 3.25 centimeters. So this is 3.25 centimeters, as well as this is also 3.25 centimeters. QR, from here to here, is 2.5 centimeters. And check it out, we have triangles that are subtending this arc. So that might come in useful with this question. And I have RS, which is 4.7 degrees, the line, or sorry, centimeters, the line RS is 4.7. We want to calculate three different things to the nearest whole number, the length of PQ, first of all. Now, if I have a semicircle drawn, then what I have here is a right angle triangle, PQR. We want to first of all find the length from P to Q. So finding the length of P to Q, since we're using a right angle triangle, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem, where I have one of my side lengths 
which is opposite the 90 degree angle, which is my hypotenuse. 3.25 is the radius. If I double that, I get 6.5. And then I have another side length, which is 2.5. So if I want to find out side length PQ squared, then I can say that is equal to PR squared minus QR squared. PQ squared is equal to 6.5, or uh, yeah, 6.5 squared minus 2.5, also squared. This is equal to 36, and PQ, therefore, is equal to 6 if I take the square root. Ah, 6 centimeters, I should say. So this side length here is 6 centimeters. Now we want to find the measure of angle QPR. That's going to be this angle here. Q, P, R, so that middle, that middle term. Now we have uh, the hypotenuse and we have an opposite side, so we can use sine P is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse and sine P is equal to 2.5 centimeters over 6.5 centimeters. And we're gonna have to take the inverse sine of that to find the angle and when we do that, we get 22 point something, so we get 23 degrees. So angle P is equal to 23 degrees. Now, we need to find, and this angle here is 23 degrees, so I'll just write it right there. Now we have to find SQR. So uh, angle SQR, this is the angle we need now, right now, when I look at this triangle, I'm just gonna redraw it down here. And it's not really a scale because I <laughs> kind of butchered this drawing, but it will serve our purposes. So this is 4.7 centimeters, and this is 2.5 centimeters. We do not have a 90 degree triangle here. And, and actually, you know what? I'm gonna redraw this for you because that is absolutely awful looks nothing like the triangle that was right here. So there's Q, R, S. Okay, that's better. So I have 4.7 centimeters, and I had this side length here, which was subtending the same angle, that's 2.5 centimeters. Now, if you recall to uh, figure two, we had a, a situation similar to this, where we had two inscribed angles. So we found this to be 23, and because this triangle and this triangle are subtending the same arc, so they're subtending the arc, which is at the arc of QR, what, that, what this means is that these inscribed angles here are gonna be equal. So this angle is also going to be 23 degrees, which will give us enough information to use our <clears throat> to use our sine law. And what we're looking for is this angle here. This is our unknown angle that we're looking for, angle Q. So we're going to set this up as sine Q over Q is equal to sine S over S. Sine Q, which is here, over 4.7, which is opposite, is equal to sine 23 degrees over 2.5 centimeters. When I rearrange, this is gonna be sine Q is equal to 4.7 times sine 23 degrees divided by 2.5 centimeters. Uh, that's a five, by the way. So 4.7 times sine 23 divided by 2.5. So this is what I get. Now, just a reminder, this is the ratio that we're given. So we need to have the inverse. So angle Q is actually gonna be equal to the inverse of this calculation here, which has a value approximately of, uh, I don't know why I put a decimal there, but let's cover that up with my five. Bam. And 
at this point, I'm going to input it like so. And that is not correct. 2.8 degrees. Let's try this again. 4.7 sine 23 divided by 2.5. Oh, what do you know? I made a mistake earlier. That should be 0 0.7. 3, 4, 5, sorry, and let's uh, take the inverse of that. Four, okay, that looks better, 47 degrees. So that angle that we're looking for, angle SQR is equal to 47 degrees. And that is a better answer because it is a correct answer. All right, let's look at this next example, compass bearings. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit confusing because we just finished that previous lesson on our angles of rotation, which essentially works the opposite of compass bearings. So if we have a bearing that's one point away from a second point uh, using our north-south lines as our directions. So if I have direction A to B, these are measured relative to a north boundary. However, these are calculated in a clockwise direction rather than a counterclockwise direction like we would use with a unit circle. So just think opposite of unit circle here. So if I look at bearing B from point A, this is going to have a measure of 125 degrees relative to north. So again, bearings are measured relative to north or from north from a clockwise direction. So here, if I have uh, these three diagrams, th these have their compass bearings for different aircraft. So heading north, this would be 60 degrees from north. This would be 240 degrees. So you got 90, another 90, 180, and then your 60 degrees going um, uh, west of south there. Or I, I get, yeah, west of south. And then this would be 340 degrees, almost a full rotation towards north. So let's take a look at this example. We have a liner that leaves a port P and sails 15 kilometers on a course of 37 degrees. So this is point P where we are going. And point P, and it goes 15 kilometers on a course 37 degrees to position Q. So if I draw a north line, and this is the trick with these questions, is think about these all as compass directions at every single point, where that is north, and this is south, this is west, and this is east. So at point P, relative to north, we move to position Q at an angle of 37 degrees. So that is 37 degrees right there. And we sail for 15 kilometers. So 15 kilometers. And we land at position Q. Now at position Q, again, we're thinking this arrow here is north. Um, and then everything re relative to this are, is our other compass directions. So that's north. And it changes course to 270 degrees. So we know that if it goes from north to east right here, this would be 90 degrees. If it goes from east to south, that would be 180 degrees, in which case it's going back down. And then another 90 degrees would be 270 degrees. So this is my 270 degree mark from here to here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it sails 12 kilometers to position R right there. What we want to do is we want to complete the sketch to illustrate the information and calculate the distance and course the liner must sail to return from R to P. So we want to know how we're going to get from R to P. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and call this Q as our unknown because it's opposite of this, uh, what is going to look like angle Q. Now, another helpful piece of information is coming right here. If we extend this north line upwards, we would have a 90 degree angle there. And we also have this angle, 37 degrees, that we can use as uh, a reference. Now, if we take a look right away, I have, um, I'll be able to find out this angle 
given that we have a right angled triangle. So that's one way you could find it. Um, and so that's angle Q. So angle Q is going to equal 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 37 degrees. So that's just 90 minus 37, which is equal to uh, 53 degrees. So we have 53 degrees right here. That's angle Q. And yeah, that's basically all the information that we need at this point. Uh, what we want to do is we want to find this side length Q. So if we set up our cosine law, we could say that Q squared. And if this is Q, this is P, and this is R. So Q squared is going to be equal to P squared plus R squared minus 2PQ cosine Q. And let's just plug in our values. Q squared is equal to 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 12 times 15 cosine 53 degrees. And I'll be taking the square root of that. So uh, let's see what we got here. So we got 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 15 times 12 times cosine 53. And the square root of this, 152.34. The square root of this is equal to 12.34 kilometers. Um, and so let's see what exactly we need to determine. Complete the sketch to illustrate this information and calculate the distance. Okay, so we got the distance. We just need to determine what the course is. Now, we know that Q is 12.34 kilometers. However, we don't know this entire angle here. So we need to find out, oh, sorry, not this. We, we have part that partial angle. Uh, we need to determine this entire angle here. So um, we have to determine this angle, which is going to be 90 degrees plus uh, the rest of this. So let's, let's find that out now. Um, angle R, we can... We can determine what this angle is, and then we can determine what the rest of this will be. So I'm just going to split this in half so we can find our angle. So in order to find angle R, we can use our sine law. So sine R over 15. So sine R over R is equal to sine 53. over 12.34, and we're going to use our entire decimals. And in order to find sine r, we're going to do the inverse of 15 times sine 50, 53 divided by 12.34. So let's store this as a there. So 15 times sine 53 divided by my previous answer, we get a ratio of 0.97, and angle R, if I take the inverse of this, is 76 degrees. So this angle here is 76 degrees. Now, uh, so that, yeah, 76 degrees. Actually, that's, that's our answer. That's all we really need to know there. We don't need the rest of this angle here. So uh, if we were to write this in words, we would say that the liner, just for it to make sense, it must sail uh, 12 and sketch, complete the sketch. I just want to see what we want to round to. Let's just to the nearest tent. 12.3 kilometers at a course of 76 degrees. There we go.